Okay, here's the insert for the fireplace. I hauled it outside. Let's see inside. This is the standard way of looking at it. That's the bottom, the back, and the two sides. This was the bottom bricks in here were done back in 82 pretty much. They've been running for 27 some years. There's the air nozzle parts for distributing the air. So in the center right there was where I had a third tube and what was happening was with the tube getting red hot and then cooling off and then red hot again cycling I was getting a shrinkage and it was pulling the center of that pipe towards the hearth area so I eventually cut it out and tried this with a single tube, but I'm going to go back to a triple tube again when I rework it. There's a few cracks in the sides, but it's stable. It's not moving anywhere. And the same way in the back. You know, they're cracked, but with the rivet arrangement, it holds the bricks in, and it's fairly durable. There's like one or two of them that the washer has, you know, succumbed to the time, but most of them, for the most part, are still there. Like down along the side here, there's one there that's missing. There's one there, one there. You can see how it's been riveted in. In the same way on this side, the rivets are pretty much gone, and some of the spots where you'd be banging across it with the scraper and whatnot. This is what it looks like on the outside. On the bottom I get more rust because I guess the moisture condenses in the ash and stuff. But you can see where the rivet is, you know, with the nails peened over. You got the strip here to hold the bricks up, keep them from falling. This is a cracked one from inside. But even though they crack a little bit, they don't fall out and they still function. This is coming around to the side. This is your secondary air flowing into the system. It has a coupling to the other side. You can turn it on or off. So that is your throttle for your secondary air. Most of the time it stays wide open. There's the latch for the stove door. There's the hinge points for the front door. And as you can see along the side, there's a little bit of cracking but like I say the bricks stayed pretty well there. This flaky stuff on the side is fire clay that I used for uh, smearing up and chinking up the the holes. It semi works, it stays around but that's twenty some years ago. And again here you can see the the bent over nail piece that was the quick and dirty way of nailing it together. What I'd do is I'd run the hole through the brick and the metal, stick a nail through it and then take an acetylene torch and heat up the nail to where it was red hot and just bend it over. So it didn't take much to uh, you know put it in position. Now what I'm going to do is take and um, weld it in position. You can see a little bit of a 
exit you know you see the flame pattern coming out here because this is low pressure area so you get a little bit of airflow through you know these little holes the chink holes that haven't been sealed up so you get a little bit of flow into the other outer chamber you can see it coming through there here is the flame tube air supply from the secondary air so you have the air coming in here it goes down this passageway and then comes up here and it goes into that set of perforated tubes it also comes in here goes along this part and up to the flame tube air and it comes down this way and goes in through that area so that is where we get the air for these piccolo tube openings so again that's air cooled through this area preheating it before it dumps it into the flame tube this as you can see is the refractory compound the hole got bigger since I was moving it around and you can see how it's getting there it's about a hundred and fifty pounds of liner so there's where you can see the refractory it used to be a hole only about so big now when I put the cargo strap across here and put it on the dolly it tended to break this up as you can see there's a spider web of stainless steel wire that I had put in there when I cast up the refractory and you can see where it's coming through holes on the side support here and what I did is I just zigzagged it from one side to the other back and forth like this to help support you know the casting so it did hold up for quite a few years but you know this is pretty stable here but I guess in the higher heat area here where it was you know over the blowtorch part that really you know softened up after a while but it's still over here like I say pretty good blowtorch area succumb to time and cycling so we'll take and uh, pull that off and show you how it looks okay this is the front door stuck back on it's hinged over here I haven't driven the pins in but do is open it up like this that latches to the side this allows the door to come and swing open. It, it moves around so that it can seal itself. I don't like having it locked down. If you had it rigid, everything would have to match up. This is a seal arrangement I had on there, and it lasted for quite a while. What I did is use the red RTV and smear a bed of it going all the way around like here and then take uh, strips of aluminum foil and place it on the wet RTV so you seal it up like that then with the compound wet you bring it around and shut the door and latch it up and then let it just sit and cure for the eight to ten hours and that it would form fit to the flange and you'd have a nice seal where you wouldn't have air coming in through your flanges here